Esther here. Thank you so much for tuning to my channel. I want to show you a couple of things before we're going to dip in about the 12 signs, uh, 12 rising for uh, the Saturn transit. I want us to really understand the bigger picture because it's going to be very limited just for us to discuss for each rising because there's so many things attached, so many things happening around. Now, a couple of things I want to mention right away in the beginning of this video. If you are new to my channel, uh, please note, I do not practice Western astrology. So we are talking about the direct sky, a sidereal system with Babylonian influence and the the knowledge of Sefer Yetzirah, book of creation, book of formation. So everything what we're going to discuss, we're going to connect as always to the bigger picture. I want to remind you that really astrology wasn't really created simply for, to use as a um, uh, you know, prediction. It is a template of our soul, especially our natal chart, what's happening in the sky. It's always big messages for us. But make no mistakes. A spiritual being, the per person who working on himself, who really uh, start to control and uh, not to be influenced uh, by stars, this is completely different approach. Therefore, I do not believe in prediction. I believe in recommendation. I can show you what's happening in the sky. I can tell you how things potentially can work. But it's really up to you, each of you. The decisions you're going to make, nobody can predict. And if you're working on yourself, if you really go in mind over matter, when you understand what is the cause and effect, when you're working on your spiritual growth, you're becoming like a creator. At least you're on the way to be like a creator. And this is why when creators spoke to Abraham, our father, the you know the person, the righteous soul, who responsible for Sfira Chesed, the mercy from the Tree of Life reality, who the one received the information of Sefer Yetzirah, Book of Formation, your, uh, he spoke, uh, the uh, creator spoke to Abraham and told him, stop, count the stars, start to move them. And you know how big um, the message for all of us, and especially this particular video, so much important, uh, it's directly connected to our Tikkun process, to our correction, to our uh, the homework we brought from previous incarnation for ourselves and for our ancestor lineage. We need to keep in mind, all of us eventually came to this world to become uh, like a creator, and astrologically speaking, to become sign 13. And I'm not referring to uh, the 13th sign, which is uh, many astrologists talk about wooden healer uh, location in the between sign Sagittarius and uh, Scorpio. Not at all. I'm talking about sign. I'm referring to the sign 13 as you gonna overcome all 12 signs. You become 13. What is the numerology of 13? Echad, one unity, yachidut, ahava, love. This is all numerology of 13. So this the number 13 and the uh, you know. What does really represent for our tikkun process, for our correction, it's much, much deeper. So therefore, when you become 13, you in control. And we need to keep this in mind. We're not here to be influenced and to be really, uh, to be like a robot. And, you know, anyone comes to us telling us something, it's going to affect our mood, it's going to affect the outcome. We need to be in the control by letting go of the control. And, and the same time to be in control. This is the whole idea about real spirituality, the contradiction of the thing, right? So please, please keep this in mind. Therefore, my channel do not, I never do prediction. And even when I work with my clients, my students, my friends, who many of you, who were my clients, you become very close and dear to my heart. Uh, because, you know, by you choosing uh, do your chart, uh, I, for me, it's a, uh, very big responsibility and we here really when we even opening your natal chart we know just to, to discuss okay you came with that and that and this is the difficulties no this is the beauty of the process of the spiritual process yes you've been given some um combination it can probably trigger certain uh you know character inside of you certain situation but this is the beauty about it this is the opportunity for you to overcome to use your tools to use your amazing soul all your previous life all experience you have in order finally to make it 
right. And what does really make it right? Work with the creation, see the bigger picture, to come to the place of balance and to bring the goodness to the world and to finish this pain and suffering. Because so far, what we're doing, it's not working because the world become even more and more tragic, more and more chaos. And this is, can be stopped, but the only it can be stopped, not by another war or not about uh, to prove your point. It can be stopped from your own personal transformation within you. You need you can only start with yourself. And we're wasting our time and our amazing energy by constantly pointing the finger of everyone possible except to see the all four fingers turning to us while we're putting one finger to somebody else. We need to look at the mirror and we always need to ask, what do I need to do? How can I change? Now, the way I want to start this video, I want us first to see something extremely important happening in the sky. And it's going to happen actually uh, until end of the year, basically end of November, even be beginning of December. I'm going to show you how uh, Saturn and North Node going to dance together. And even after, we, it's another very important thing going to happen for another couple of years. We're going to be put right now in the frame where we'll have no choice. We're gonna, we will be required change. If we're not going to change, we're not going to make it. Because the world getting more and more to the place with almost no, no space between time, space, and motion, be, between cause and effect. My apology. Therefore, we need to understand, we need to recognize uh, you, you can only lie to yourself and to be in denial on a uncertain point and this is the time of truth and again i'm going to show you what i'm referring to so let's look at right now i put purposely february 14 the reason i put for you guys february 14 because february 14 is the day where day before saturn uh will be merging with sun in aquarius in a sign aquarius so it's really really important especially if you do have uh, important um planets in Aquarius, please look at it, and especially in the early degrees. It's extremely important. It's uh, if your father is still alive, uh, make every attempt to communicate with your father, to make it peace if, you, if it's required, to see what lesson you need to learn from your father. And any figure, any figure which is uh, superior on you, uh, you need to see what's really, really message they're going to require for you. Now, what else happening here and the, and the day we see, then we have Neptune, almost like in the perfect, yes, in the perfect conjunction in the 29th degree uh, together with Venus. Uh, of course, we have our beautiful uh, Jupiter, at Zedek. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's right now in a position where he's really, really asking us to open our hearts. Uh, to see, uh, to feel the pain and suffering, not just not to see, to feel the, your own pain, to really feel the pain of others. It's really important and to understand what is really spirituality about. And now we're getting to a very important point. Look what's happening here. We have here uh, the body and friend of our Saturn, uh, North North Rahu, which is uh, we're talking about the head of the dragon. Really, in the Sefer Yetzirah, it's not called North North, and it's not called Rahu. It's actually head of the dragon because, really, in ancient, uh, it's uh, it's showing as a dragon. There's a tail and there's the head. So this is the head, which is headless. Uh, how ancient calls, which is give me, give me, and then we have Uranus, and look what's happening here. What is the Uranus and, and North Node, uh, uh, the head of the dragon, coming from? They're coming from Aquarius. So those three bodies, Saturn, which is represent Aquarius. Then we have North Node, which is coming from Aquarius as well. This is in the, in the chart. It uh, represents the uh, house of Aquarius. And we have Uranus, which is as well coming from Aquarius. And they aspecting each other. I really, really want you to pay attention to what's happening here. 
And of, of course, we have a position, uh, you know, north, uh, south north. We have a drug, a uh, tale of dragon, which is our tikkun, our previous lifetimes, the experience we came from, the luck we're feeling sometimes and no need. It's like a luck of vessel, which is we always need to awaken. And it's, it's, we have, you know, we have still in, uh, in Libra. What we need to understand here, this is not typical uh, Saturn, uh, you know, return to his own sign. This is, uh, we're talking about, and finally, he's actually together with his bodies, and especially North Node. And remember, in my previous video, I described uh, Saturn as a socialist, even the communist, but not communist, uh, communist as we think. A communist, it's not uh, the real communism, according to spirituality, it's not something you've been forced to share and to be equal. No, real communism from a spiritual place, it's you feel need, you actually want to share, you want to feel other people and to see they have luck and help them and not just give them just by giving them with all your heart, you know, even the way how we give people feel. If you give with all your heart, with in right intention, you can transform people who actually used to be takers by receiving what you have to give them. They receive with the new different energy and it, they can be transformed to receive the desire with, with the gift to be givers as well. But in order to be giver, you need to know how to receive. You understand? This is what real communism. And this is why Saturn here to teach us from the harsh way, but to the truthful way, the only way for us to exist is to be with unity with people. You don't have to be best buddies. You don't have to love everyone, but to accept other people's view, to respect, it's a must. And Saturn required in order to speak nonsense, to be very um, cautious about your, your thoughts, to be cautious about what comes from your from your mind and really really important and what rahu rahu represent com uh, capitalism and cap capitalism and the worst way of capitalism only give me give me only for me i want the whole entire world i want the whole universe and i don't care what's happened to others i want to create an environment then i'm the only one who enjoy and this is why until november 30s basically until end of this year we're going to feel our tikkun. We're going to, each of us, You, I really, really recommend for you guys to learn more about the house your rising will be affected by it, which is, I'm going to take you to this journey on the second part of this video. And we're going to, it's going to be a learning session. You need to get um, more and more uh, knowledge about yourself and about how you can control uh, different identities you have inside of you. And then we have Uranus. And what does the Uranus represent? And by the way, not to mention they in areas, right? In areas, first speak, first do, and then think. Yes, Aries has no agenda, which is great. It's like a pure coming out, but then you need to deal with that. So the tact, the patience, to really, really, really pay attention to what comes from your mouth because it's not longer just going to come out. You never know when it's going to land and what message, how the, your message will be uh, interpreted by many other people. This is why social media, everything what's happened, the real war, we need to remember that the real war is the war of Gog and Magog, the war of thoughts. What's happened? Because what comes from our mouth, it's only the out, what's actually what's activating in our mind and what is our mind is or chokhmah it's the wisdom we need to use our mind as the mind as the wisdom and not as a garbage collector i want to warn you guys yes we need to be you know scared in a good way in front of the creation we have to be in the awe in front of the creation to have so much appreciation for the souls given to us the opportunities given to us and stop with nonsense. Stop to put your, your mind, your beautiful energy to places which, which is create another separation, in other words. You need to wake up. We all need to wake up. Otherwise, if you will study what's happening in Zohar, what Zohar explained what's going to happen by end of the days, 
this is sounds not good, but at the same time, Zohar explained, if we were going to transform, if we're going to really become a creator, we're going to change the whole reality and we're going to change outcome. Okay, so just remember that. And what, what another thing very important, guys, I want to mention to you, as you probably know, the North Nodes is the only identities we have in the sky, which is the going against clock. Every um, planets we have in our solar system, they're going clockwise, except lunar nodes. So what's going to happen soon? What's going to happen? By end of this year, the north node and south node moving to Pisces and to Virgo. And it's coming very, very close to Saturn. And what's happened with the Saturn when Saturn going to change the Aquarius in 25? It's going to jump inside of the Pisces. They're going to end. So this is going to be such an important lesson for us, especially in 24. The world not going to just change. We're going to change. We're going to look back and we're not going to recognize who we are. And the beauty about this process, we're going to feel things differently. We're going to have different level of appreciation. We're going to need different quality of things. We're going to, if we're going to uh, choose our food, we're going to choose from the place of healing, for place just to serve our body, to be a better human being and not to fulfill some luck and some desires with the food. We're going to choose uh, different level of healings. We're going to use less and less of pharmaceutical. We're going to do more meditation, more exercise, but everyone on his own balanced way. This is beauty. If not, it's only chaos and death coming from it. And this is truth. Okay. So let's right now dive in to uh, 12 signs. And first, I want us to show you a couple of things uh, before we're going to start with areas. Uh, why I mentioned this time more rising than moon? Because rising really represents, uh, rising more connect to our tikkun process, to our correction and incarnation on the level of or makif, surround light. So it's mean our activities, how, uh, what we want to achieve, how we're going to be in front of the society. It's the outside world, okay? So this is why rising, very important. But moon, it's important as well, because if you can, uh, you can listen to both signs, whatever, uh, first it's rising, it will show you more for the outside, what does your homework require, and the moon, it's your inside world, it's really your own communication with yourself, your own personal transformation, okay, so this is why it's extremely important for you. Now, um, what else I wanted to ask, to tell you, yes, so the rising Okay, so just for you to remember that. Now, we're going to start with Aries. In uh, dear Aries, we're going to start with you. So you're actually very lucky. On top of everything, what's going on with you, right? You have North Node right now in your house. You have uh, South Node uh, in uh, Libra. You're going through a very, very important karmic period of time. Remember, every 18 years, you have a two and a half years, which is the return to your um to your natal chart to your really your blueprint of your soul and you need to work on it and i hope guys you're working on it relationship how you communicate with other person extremely important now we live in a house really in a nutshell it's called happy house it's one of the really uh best location for saturn again saturn not really friend with uh, uh areas as you remember because areas has a lack of control of reactive system and really it's the saturn does not like to be there plus uh, remember mars right so so what's really important for you for this period of time you need to learn everything about 11 house because 11 house is a present friends destiny stepchildren if you have it gives us a straight through the our friendship society see the power of the collective Groups, social groups, networking, organization and professional association. You understand the focus here on the activities we undertake within those groups. And remember, 11 house, what does the 11 house represent? Aquarius. So you really, really going to feel this. It's going to give you a lot of support 
because you already been working on relationship, because you will be working already on friendship, because you already understand more and more lessons, importance, consider other person, you should really benefit from this. Do not waste your time. Uh, take this period of time very seriously. This is amazing, amazing time for transformation. And remember, because Rahu will be effect Rahu inside of your house, on top of his actually, I said his will be influenced right now. His aspect, his direct like aspect with uh, Saturn. What's going to happen if Saturn, when he's Saturn on his own, uh, giving us lesson is one thing. Now his body. His other friend, which is the troublemaker, right? The friends, because they really in nutshell represent same idea, just different approach. He's going to activate everything possible for you to have fights with your friends, uh, not to consider groups. You understand? So this is why, especially the first year, 2023, Saturn's going to, you know, going to check more and more how much we're ready. But because his body, uh, you know, uh, his body, uh, Rahu, North Node, the headless uh, dragon, he's going to really push. So keep this in mind. It's really, really important. Okay. I wish you got, there's so many things I can, but I don't want to complicate things. I want to simplify because light is simple and it's not complicated. Now, why I indicate here, uh, you can see Yud K, Vav K over here, right? You can see it. Okay. So this is the secret. This is came from the uh, one of the most powerful name of God, which is usually spelled differently. But for each planet, for each combination, sorry, for each sign, it's distributed differently. Now, for Aquarius, for the period of time, I recommend for you to meditate on hey, and then we have youth, and then we have why above, and then we have hey. It's really, really important for you. Every time you feel you're overwhelmed and you need control, I want you uh, to. Um, meditate on letter bet. Now, by end of this video, I'm going to leave uh, my amazing teacher, Raf, uh, a short uh, three minutes video about letter bet. I promise you, it's going to blow your mind away in a good way. What he's going to explain about bet, of course, I could explain to you, but I wanted to just to connect to the voice and the presence of the high soul Kabbalist, because then you're going to get more energy from it and more appreciation. And what Rav explained, the power of the Hebrew alphabet and power of letter bet, why letter bet was chosen to be created, you know, Saturn, Saturn created by letter bet. Okay, very important. So I will let my amazing teacher to explain this uh, for all of us. Okay, so guys, I wish you good luck and we're going next. Next one, we have uh, our beautiful Taurus. Now, Taurus, for you guys, it's going to be in a 10 house. And 10 house, you remember, 10 house is the house of Capricorn. And it's really similar energy to yours because Capricorn, like you, very attached and understand what is really Malchut, what is the practical things, you know, how, what, what is the career and, uh, you know, because of the earth energy. And uh, for, uh, you know, 10 house, for you it's actually excellent because saturn uh saturn loves 10 house but saturn you know again let me remind you what is the 10 house right the 10 house really address um the father who is the general the more authority as a parent you know and uh he's uh, you know in society as whole as well the role we take in our community focus on how we ourselves and the community why i'm bringing the community again because of the uh, because of the aquarius we need to remember the 10 house going to give you amazing amazing opportunity for the leadership you understand and not just to look for your career and to be uh to be bossy in whatever you need to to see how you know the bigger picture how things around you everything accompany other people and remember, because of the eight house, it represents a career. In the beginning, you're going to be challenged because of the Rahu, uh, because of the North Node. Because he's aspecting the uh, Saturn, as I said, mentioned many times before, he's going to uh, challenge you about your career. He's going to push you to choose no matter what and to ignore what other people, how they're going to feel about it, and if other people are going to be hurt or how you're going to do the way, how you're going to do it is going to be more selfish. Pay attention. 
because this is going to be for sure you will be challenged but the way how you're going to receive now you know now you can um, take umbrella now i'm telling you astro telling you listen it's going to be rain this period of time would you go with no protection no or it's going to be heavy snow so you know now you will need to be prepared and it's not about to be scary and to be cautious it's a good thing for spiritual being because when we're careful we're showing the creation then we have respect we have appreciation okay very very important important and you know um it's after this transit this transit gonna make you more serious a kind of you know the more serious person after this transit you're gonna feel then you're going to take things much more seriously. You know, the justice and integrity are the definition of Saturn in Capricorn. You understand it? Why is it in Capricorn? Because it's the 10th house, the house of Capricorn. So just pay, uh, pay attention to this. It's okay, I wish you good luck, guys. The next one, we have uh, our beautiful Gemini. Gemini, for you, is going to be in the ninth house. I think it's unbelievable. Because not to mention, by the way, I didn't mention for previous signs, we need to remember where we came from right now. Because, for example, Taurus just came from um, from nine house and now he's in 10 house. So the spirituality he learned, it should help him with 10 house. Now you guys, Gemini, you just finish the process of the eight house. It's one of the most difficult uh, position for the, probably for the past uh, you know two and a half years wasn't easy for you at all on the sense of no matter what you touch no matter what you do you felt like nothing really work out but it's not true because actually eight house it's not bad house at all the eight house is the house of philosophy the down world the really really deep deep transformation life and that there was probably moments for you you felt like you even have no desire any longer and this is the time. This is the time when the cosmos make operation on our soul, when we literally feel that's it. You know, we say in Aramaic one of the most powerful thing. I have to tell you guys, especially for the nine house, uh, Shimon Bar Yochai, the author of the Zohar, the righteous soul, who represent the highest level of or makif surround light ever was given to human. It says that Satan couldn't do anything the, during the period of time when Shimon Bar Yochai was in the earth. This is how high the soul. So Shimon Bar Yochai, when he used to wake up in the morning, uh, whatever couple hours they slept, I cannot even, I don't have this information, but in the morning it says, he used to always say, Hineni Sholcheni. It's a very powerful statement. Hineni Sholcheni. It's, there's I, there I am, take me. It's almost like in a simple for take me and do with me whatever it's supposed to be done. And what's really, really amazing about the nine house, right? What is the nine house? Nine house is the house of philosophy, education, law. It's, you know, it addresses, um, you know, publishing and uh, multicultural, different adventure. You know, it's, um, it's expert in import business for the business, you know. And this is also house of multi-generation lineage. You know, it's a children, children in law, our search for meaning. Uh, and I will tell you, you know, the nine, again, uh, you need to learn about nine house. Nine house is one of the most spiritually important houses we have in a natal chart. You know, ancients, when they used to uh, read person, um, personal chart, guess what is the next uh, house of the first house was always checked? is the ninth house because the fifth house of cre creativity is important and all the other houses extremely but nine house was the next why because nine house represent our growth in and spirituality and there's nothing more important because end of the day we really came here to become like god right when we're going to leave the world we're not going to take with us nothing the only thing we're going to take with us in upper level our understanding and the energy we create here in this dimension how to be like God, how to behave, how to think, everything. And this is what really important. This is for Gemini, for you guys, extremely important. Because you came right now from uh, from the house, which is really uh, put you through, uh, you know, mid-grounding, but in a good way. It was really, really necessary, important period of time for you to remove all the uh, shtoyot, all the, uh, you know, all the uh, things you don't need they're not longer serving you 
and now you're ready for the really spiritual transformation but what's going to happen now you're going to feel uh, with the nine house, especially with the eight house, you already start to feel the spirituality you used to practice, you doubting. You feel maybe your teacher is not really uh, the person you thought he is and can help you. So nine house, the first period of time with the Rahu, he's going to really, really push you. They're going to make you doubt about spirituality. It's going, it can make you doubt about many things. You see, what is really doubt? Doubt comes from, in Hebrew word, we have safek. Is the same numerology of Amalek. Amalek, uh, you know, if you know a little bit the story of Esther uh, Purim, it's one of the most important klipa negativity really we came to overcome its uncertainty. Because when you're not sure, when you're uncertain with the light of creator, you're really on your own. Remember, because light of creator can come to us only on the level we open for the light of creator. It's simple as that. Nobody going to come to save us if we're not ready to transform and first to save ourselves. Really, really important, right? So this is really important. Uh, you know, you need to be prepared, guys. Um, it's possible you're going to want to travel and you're going to have a fear for traveling. You're going to think about all possible asp uh, obstacles, asp obstacles, especially if you have a moon, by the way. This is another story. But remember about the illusion why this uh, you know period of time was given to us okay so i wish you good luck uh next one we have our beautiful cancer cancerian for you saturn uh, will be in the eighth house and you just came from the period of time of the seventh house house of relationship uh there's a possible some of you need to say goodbye to people who you used to be close people who you used to maybe call friend or even personal relationship, you need to revisit yourself. What does relationship represent for you? Who you are? What is the, why you need a relationship? Uh, do you need a relationship in order to fulfill some block and to make you happy? Or you going to learn now, uh, you know, from the seventh house, how to be independent, how to be on your own, happy, unconditional, with no conditions. And this is real happiness. So the eight house is, you know, um, you know, Saturn uh, transit through the eight house is address death, reborn, uh, the total transformation is the house of transformation, house of uh, sexuality, sexual energy, and it's not just on the physical level. What is really how you use sexuality? Why? What is represent? Do you understand the energy coming from? You understand this house is about depth of any relationship interaction how you interact you know how truthful you are why you need to be investigating why you cannot just trust without condition but again at the same time uh not to feel like you know you know you you have really really hard time to trust because of the previous experience of the seven house so the light of creator specifically gonna uh, ask you to be more simple more simple with people, but most importantly, to be more simple with yourself. You understand? Because it's really, really important. You know, on a practical level, another thing, this house represents alim um, alimony, uh, alimony, taxes, insurance, right? Support from others, by the way. Financial support, you know, and as a spiritual, emotional support, physical support. This is how it's going to teach you how to, yes, rely on others how to accept and to receive support and guess what's going to happen this first period of time you're going to feel like you have no support and you will say by god i just came from seven house cancerian listen you guys are very special you're the only sign in the zodiac system which is represented by moon and moon is the mother moon not always need to receive benefits she doesn't need always to receive compliment and, and acknowledgement. She's here to serve and to give. And this is the way how she receive. Please remember that, okay? So this is, if you understand this in more depth, it's going to help you big time. You understand? And learn about eight house because eight house, I can talk about eight house for a couple hours. It's one of the most mystical house. And remember, it's the house of Mars and house of Pluto. And both of them require from us different level of activity, different level of depth of learning and working on our reactive system and not to let any 
depression or any even smell of depression come closer because it's all illusion. And Rahu will make sure then you will feel pity for yourself because the eight house, you know, you need to rely on other people. Okay, so remember, guys, you're very strong. You're very, very nourishing. One of the kindest people. So remember how lucky you are, how blessed you are to came with such a big heart. Use it, okay? I wish you good luck. Bye-bye. Okay, Leos, for you guys, you have a seven house, right? And you just came from six house. And by the way, six house was excellent for, in a sense. Uh, you know, six house is one of the best houses for Saturn, right? Because they they really represent very, very identical energy. Why am I mentioning six house? Because it's very fresh for you still. The Saturn just moved to Aquarius, but when he was in uh, Capricorn, he was really activating your sixth house. Sixth house, it's about responsibility to be on time, right? It's the house of conflict. But at the same time, it can teach you how to be more humble, especially for you, you Leo. It's not easy for you or to be in the sixth house because how, sixth house has nothing to do with energy of Leo, right? Especially it's Mercury too. So for you, uh, Lioness, for you, you, you know, you're such a big soul. So you have a... Oh, you the only sign who represent by sun and the sun it's about giver givers but you need to learn how to receive and guess what seven house will require from you to learn how to be balanced by giving and receiving receiving and giving share sharing you understand because there's a difference between give and share you you can give and people can hate you for it and actually not even be any longer part of your life if you know how to share, especially with your children, especially with people close to you, just just share so much, then person will have opportunity to uh, to invest his own time in his own effort. Because the leadership, real leader, he uh, he knows how to create leaders and not just to uh, to be in front of people. You understand? This is real leadership. Uh, what I want to tell you about seven house. Uh, seven house it's a really really important house it's the house of relationship and remember right now south and north nodes in uh, libra in um in in the areas they all about uh, they all about really relationship relationship is everything a relationship with universe relationship with the uh, creation relationship with yourself with your soul and relationship with other people. This is one of the most important things we came to learn in this dimension. Because if we did not require to learn just to be in one person, have his own island, you know, it's really, really nice. Or, you know, just to love animals or just to be uh, on a certain period of time with people when it's convenient. But it's really important for us to see the bigger picture. It's all about bigger picture, by the way. If you know how to see bigger picture, if you know how to... Uh, justified people not right we jump and judge them justify them because as more we justified other people to to see always better than it seems initially this is how we're going to be justified by creation it's very simple why because we're energetical being it's like a magnetic field magnetic field when we complain we attract everything what complains when we are sharing, when we're happy, we attract what is happy. It's very simple. Nobody can help us with that. Only ourselves, right? You know, seven house, it's about partnership. Not just relationship, partnership, right? It's desire to love and to be loved. It's the acceptance, you know? When you accept, you can be accepted. And remember, the best way to change people around us is when we change in ourselves Everything starts to change, align around us, right? Very important. You know, it's business relationship, it's contracts, uh, you know, legal uh, negotiation. So in the beginning, you're going to be a little bit challenged. Uh, you know, especially Rahu will make sure then, you know, you will feel the seven house lessons. So just remember that, just pay more attention. For you guys, make notes what's really seven house represent, what work attached to it. And remember how Rahu, the, you know, the headless dragon, going to push, because he's right now with his bodies, he's going to represent, they're both going to represent for you two different systems. You will need to choose the bad side of uh, capitalism or the good side of communism, right? Why I bring this again to the picture? Because a lot of people have uh, almost 
when they hear a word, uh, you know, communion, they feel, my God, it's the most negative thing. No, this is how Satan plays in this playground. But when you read uh, righteous souls like Rava Shlak, the author of Bali Sulam, who interpreted of Zohar for us, he explained what real, real communism, but this is how Satan works. He changed the whole thing for us, and the same thing can represent positive, the same thing can represent negative, okay? So I wish you guys good luck, and uh, work on yourself, work on the relationship, and uh, as, uh, as a real leaders, okay? All the best. Next one, we have Virgo. Uh, Virgos, uh, you just came, guys, from fifth house. And uh, you, you know, because you were in the fifth house, it's going to help you uh, even more right now with the sixth house. But again, what is the sixth house? Sixth house is your own house. And you have good relationship with Saturn because you guys are about to be on time, you, uh, you know, structure, um, to be honest. But the most important for you in the sixth house, it's almost I feel when we get in our own house, with Saturn, it's I consider it's like we're getting our north and south node at the same time. Because Saturn, for me, it's even more important than south and north node. Because Saturn, he's, he really, really cares for you to transform. If north node, for example, does not care, he will only here to create for you platform for you to fail. South node, just showing you, you know, I don't care anymore. I already experienced that, done that. But what's Saturn? Saturn wants you to become like God. This is why he's a strict, uh, you know, strict teacher, but very liberating. He really, really represents the best interest for us here. So for you in the sixth house, you know, it will address your health. You really, really will need to, to take next level what the health represents for you. You know, you work, you work routine. And, you know, as a human being, we naturally have uh, shortcomings, right? We're attracting and bring conflicts. And this is the house of conflict. And many times, you know, uh, you know, Virgos, they don't like conflicts, but they attract the conflicts. It's the house of conflict. This is why it's important for you to understand how you change even the look. Because Virgos, uh, many times, even on the face, they don't know how to hide when they're not happy, when they're unsatisfied. So you need to learn, learn how to, not just to fake it, to... When you change, even your face change because people feel the energy. You know, they really, really feel when somebody unhappy, unsatisfied, especially when you with your family, when you require from them something they actually don't have with them because you came from such a perfection. It doesn't mean everyone really understand and they require. So for you, it's acceptance. It's extremely important with the sex house to accept others, you know, and you guys will, uh, you can be the good messengers for people to understand what does the health represent for them? What food? If you are part of any healing or you want to learn healing, it's really, really important, good period of time because this is period of time, by the way, uh, when uh, for the next few years, there's going to be a lot of new developments of uh, natural medicine, more healing, more natural food. And you can be really, really big part of it, you know, guys. And it's a house of pets, our house pets, the animal kingdom. And it's amazing, guys. If you think about it, You've been in a way representing in this dimension animal kingdom because of the sex house. And you know what is the animal kingdom? The angels, the literary angels, they're here to teach us, you know, uh, we have four dogs. I know it sounds a lot, but they like our children. We couldn't even imagine, you know, it, we learn so much from them, so much, the sharing, the love they give and everything. But still our animals we don't have to con with animals our correction our correction our learning lessons with humans because you know uh, our animals don't really answer they give them unconditional love and this is very in a way easy but we here to learn how to give unconditional as well and this is what important for you guys with the six house okay so learn more about six house uh, be a good uh, um, students you know just spend time, take your own chart, open your chart, see what's happening in the Aquarius in your chart. Uh, see what's happened in, uh, you know, in your in your own house of Virgo, of your rising and your moon. And if you never did your chart, find good astrology. This is a good period of time to look for the next couple of years until 2025. I wish you many blessings, guys. Next one, we have a Libra. Uh, dear Libras, you guys, uh, first of all, you're amazing. 
I'm going to start with that, of course. And, uh, you know, your peacemakers, you very sweet people. Um, you really came to this world to learn how to love yourself like a Virgos, but from the different place. And now, you know, it's not just you have Saturn return in Aquarius in the fifth house. Don't we have? Don't forget, you do have uh, right now South Node, the dragon uh, tail, which is uh, your um, very very important uh, uh, South Node in your in your in your house. So you're going through this process right now, really really imp important process. You almost need to like uh, reborn again to activate new desire. <clears throat> Because South Node, he he diminished desires, right? Because he represents past, past lives. And anything represents our past lives of achievement, we kind of feel, you know, it's okay. You know, I don't really need much in that sense. It's a little bit, you know, I, I, I'd rather to be a little bit behind the scene and not to have conflict. Yes, I heard, but you know what? I don't right now to impose on anyone. So this is kind of a little bit mentality. You're working on it and hopefully you more and more activating, you're using the energy of areas because remember every time we have uh, uh, other sign in the position, we came to learn from this, this sign and the other sign came to learn from us. So for you now, you have any fifth house you know, fifth house, it's a house of creativity. It's extremely, extremely important house. It's the house of children as well. This is something you will need this period of time, uh, almost like to learn a new level of communication with your own children. First of all, what is really creativity, romance, represent for you? What is the, you know, fun, games and hobbies? And very, very important, this is another way to take care of yourself. You know, the games, hobbies, uh, fun, anything you do, don't be the you know um the the, the party dumber you know like it's almost like you you're you know you're working on a party you invite people and instead to enjoy you constantly think okay is everything we have enough enough food is it yes it's important but learn how to have fun okay it's extremely important because this is why rahu specifically gonna kind of uh, send you opportunities in order in order for you for you to fail with this energy you know and it's you know, frequently it's a pleasure. Uh, it's is for you to learn what is really pleasure. You know, in the simple act of, uh, you know, creating a creative of art. And if you ever thought to go artistic, do something just for yourself. It's actually a really really good period of time. Especially you're gonna feel something not working if you play piano, you listen to music, you paint, you do something with your hand. By the way, it's really healing to work with the hands. Any anything possible to soil something, to create clothes, to create anything really, really good. So it's going to help you, by the way, on the, when we do such an action on physical level, it actually can help us on the emotional level, right? If you were planning to get pregnant, it's an excellent period of time. A lot of, uh, you know, Libras, uh, anything you really have with the fifth house, with this transition, Saturn can send you righteous children, especially if you're going to use this transformation. It's really, really good, you know. Um, the creative life is someone from which we uh, we can drive much personal pleasure. Why I want to bring you again about pleasure. I feel um, Libras sometimes, they're looking for pleasure from one place. You know, Libras are the best shoppers. They know how to buy good quality stuff and they feel satisfied for some period of time. But real pleasure comes from real balance because what does Libra represent? The scale. It's all about balance, right? So you guys, you came to learn how to love yourself, actually, because because you're constantly in the battle to satisfy this person, satisfy this one, or be, to be between both. It's important to consider others, but specifically for you, you came to learn how to consider yourself. You understand? This is the interesting part. And the fifth house can really, really help you with that. So just, just learn more about fifth house, guys, okay? I wish you good luck. So the next one, we have our beautiful Scorpios. And Scorpio, for you, uh, Saturn in Aquarius transit in the fourth house. And remember, you just came from the third house. Uh, third house, you probably learn a lot of things about the communication, how your mind can work on a more practical level, how the, your nervous system, right? You went through a really period of time when you need to rethink on a practical level how much you distribute your energy, especially from your mind, because you're such a deep people, you know, you in your essence, you're very deep, 
uh, people, you you the you know you the investigators, but in the same time you're looking for high quality, and you're very devoted, and it's really really amazing quality because Scorpions, you know when you have a team team member Scorpio, you know they really dedicated. But in the same time, we need to remember for you guys, you have something similar with the Virgo. By the way, it's interesting because if you look at your uh, sign image, it's very similar to the Virgo. And many times people don't really pay attention to it. But you in Virgos, you came to give a break to other people. You understand? To really work on yourself. And now the fourth house is the house is the essence of home, family, your ancestry, right? Your ancestral lineage, when we think of home, what really home represent what is our you know our roots where we came from you're going to have so many new revelations you're going to have different because you're such a you amazing dreamers you know you have very deep mystical dreams but now it's going to connect to your ancestral lineage and you know fourth house it's in a way closer to scorpio house because this the both houses represent ancestral lineages represent where we came from, our roots, our understanding, our, you know, essence, essence of our souls. This is why the deepness coming from life and death. So what's really important for you, Scorpions, this period of time, you will need to rebuild. Yes, I'm going to say not build. I'm going to say rebuild your relationship with your family members. You will need, you require to be more easy and more forgiving, no matter what they did. It's done what's done. Now is the new page. This new era we already enter, it's all about rejuvenation. And this is what the fourth house is going to help you. Because what is really home? It really represents our heart. Because remember, uh, sign of cancer, not just represent stomach, it's actually represent the inside of the heart, according to the ancient. If Leo represents the shape of the heart, the uh, cancerian, a lot of people don't know, can cancerian, sign of cancer, represent stomach, the gut feeling, and it's represent inside of the heart. And you're going to be right now living with this energy of sensitivity. You it, At first, you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. You will say, I don't like I'm sensitive, but I'm not showing now. I need to show my insensitivity. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's exactly what's going to happen. Because from that transformation, from this vulnerability, because for Scorpio to be vulnerable, it's almost, I'd rather to die, God forbid, because Scorpius wants to be the security of, you know, just to, to be in control. But real control coming from letting go of control, right? Because you guys represent in your essence, eight house, house of total transformation. Now you will be given opportunity and mind you, if we have North North will push us for it. So pay attention, anything connect to your home, to your ancestral lineage, now, you will have opportunity to move to new locations. If you uh, decide to change your location, make changes in your house, it's excellent as well. Because uh, simplify, try to unclutter your house, try to remove things not serving you, try to have as less things around you, the physical, because mind, it's a matter, ma, you know, everything, whatever substance and shape, it's uh, affecting our nervous system. So if you want to easy for you, so clean your house, try to reshape things, try to unclutter. It's going to help you as well on the emotional level. Okay, Scorpions, I wish you all the best. Thanks. The next one, we have beautiful Sagittarius. Guys, for you, it's going to be a Saturn uh, return in Aquarius, going to be in your third house. And remember, you just came from second house. House of Taurus, house of, uh, of money, understanding what money represents, what the early dynamic of uh, your uh, family experience, you know, when you're children, you need to, you probably went through a lot of things, realization, what food represents for you, what, uh, what desires, what is the quality of desires, you know, you went through really, really big process with the second house, I have to tell you. Because second house about possession and uh, financial and self-worth, right? And for you to understand the self-worth, it's really important because you're such an amazing, high-quality people. You guys represent nine house, the highest of spirituality. This is why sometimes you challenge more than others, especially restriction what comes from your mouth. You know, just you can be such a quick shooters. So now in the third house, which is uh, third house is the high intelligence as well. Is the house uh, which is good for you is the house of 
um, communication, uh, you know, sharing knowledge, uh, sharing receiving knowledge and uh, information, travel, using our mind, our imagination, you know, how we take in spirituality and how we transform everything around us in more beauty. And, you know, for the traveling, you will have such a desire to travel. There's some fear is going to come with it because remember, it's a Saturn and he's going to teach you new level of traveling. Uh, what is your intention? How much you're going to spend? Because now you came from the lesson of this, the second house. You know, this house represents brothers and sisters, which is important as well, because for you guys, you've been challenged usually with brothers and sisters. This is you came with this to work on it. And, you know, usually people who have very, very important uh, in the chart nine house, a house of Sagittarius, these people who actually many times came to bring more spirituality to the ancestor lineage, they can be like a, a one in three generation who really people who uh, who wants to study, understand, even when you study religiosity, you were religious, you understand it's uh, no. The future about spirituality really really important you know it's is house of communication and for you it's going to be amazing because through your spirituality you're going to use the third house in different level of spirituality a different level of communication you know it's a conscience uh, to be more aware you know and because it's a, a mental emotional straight you will learn how to be more emotional stronger this is really, really important to be more balanced. You know, it's all about balance. I love third house. It's the house of Gemini. It's the house of a bigger thinker. And now, guys, with your spirituality, the, this is like a house. With this combination, you become teachers. But not just any teacher. You become teacher from the highest place. Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. And this is, you know, because... Saturn, it represent really, he, he does represent career for all of us. We all will be required to change how happy we are with what we do, how much we bring to the play, to the community, what we do. And for you, it's going to be really, really big. And it's excellent if you practice, uh, you know, marketing, if you practice anything connected to the writing, uh, it's going to be excellent as well. And by the way, even though a lot of places right now letting go a lot of people, people are going to be without work, there's a reason for it. You remember now they have a new system, uh, which is uh, they literally cannot even um, identify it if it's reading, uh, reading by human or it's actually reading by uh, robot. Why? Because now, even though some of us lost the work, now we need to ask what I'm good at. What really make me happy? Maybe when I was did before, it's not really what I needed. Maybe I need to do more something more with creativity. This is the time when we require to awaken from, from within us the qualities we have, the talents we have, and to put talent in what we do. Okay? So I wish you good luck, Sagittarius, uh, with this period of time, and uh, I will talk to you later. And next one, we have Capricorn. For you guys, uh, your own planet Saturn, Shaptai, uh, come into the second house and you just finished the first house. You just came from operation room. you still in recovery. And uh, I'm sure many of you have so many different realizations and you start to open your hearts more. And remember, you guys, you in a position with uh, cancer. You came to this world to learn from Cancer and how to open heart. And Cancer came from, you know, from to learn from you how to be more practical and more present. So this second house, it's really, really awesome. I think you earned it. This second house, yeah, by end of this transit, going to make you understand sustenance on a completely different level from the self-worth perspective. Really, really amazing. So this is why, especially in the beginning of this period of time, be careful what kind of financial decision you will make uh, if you uh, money with stocks. Make sure you donate because when you have for everyone, it's really important to donate. For you, if anything ever happened, you, you're planning to make an important decision before you make decision, donate at least 10% from your income. If you have teacher, discuss with your teacher. If you don't have teacher, find find organization, which is your trust. Learn about organization. It's always 
uh, important for us not just blindly to give, to understand where money is going to, to be, if you can be even involved, it's going to be amazing, amazing for you, okay? Because I just want to remind you what second house represents, you know, it represents possessions. And it represents value, financial value, self-worth, as I said, you know, it's an early family dynamic. You will start to remember things from your childhood, which has affected you and made you a certain way. It's going to be very important for you. Perhaps you need to come back in your meditation and evaluate the same situation happened when you're young, when you're child, when you before you, you know, even your teenager years. And perhaps to switch, to change something, and maybe it's not serving you anymore. Maybe the way how you learn about money from your even parents, they were so sometimes attached and insecure, or maybe they always say it, if you have enough money, you already done, you, you made it. Maybe this is another thing made you a little bit disabled to, uh, to grow spiritually and to be to understand what is the sustenance. Because sustenance is not just money. Sustenance it's a real fulfillment from the right place, okay? And we are on our own feelings and emotions. This house will help you. Well, our inner self, you know, ability and needs, wants, what we really own and what really, and to understand nothing belongs to us. Because for you, Capricorn, the second house is extremely important. It's like I said to Taurus, Taurus going through your house and you going through house of um, Taurus right now. For both of the signs, extremely important to understand there's nothing in this world we own. Nothing. Everything was given to us is a gift. Yes, you made an effort, you think, but really, when you're growing more and more spiritual, it's good to enjoy things you have. Don't get me wrong. And it's important to have a big desire because big desire, it's, it's one of the most important thing for spiritual being. But what quality of the big desire you have? You know, how much attachment, how much you depend on the values, how much you depends on, you know, your own, uh, you know, physical things you have. You know, if it's this is really, you depend to be happy or you can, you start to learn how to be independent. Happy, happiness for no reason. This is one of the very, very important statement. My teacher, Rob Burke, always says, we came to this world, really learn how to be happy for no for no reason. Because when you really connect directly with the source, no matter what's happening around, you stay balanced. And this is really one of the most important things we came to learn in this dimension. Okay, guys, I wish you good luck. Next one, we have our beautiful Aquarius. And uh, Saturn, return you on. Saturn, Shabtai. Return in your own house, first house. What can I tell you, Aquarius? First of all, I love you. You are such a, you are such a amazing souls. You remember my first video? I said I gave you so many compliments because you really, this is really who you are. You came from the future, and many times you've been misunderstood. Not because people not not love you, because they're just not ready. Because when we're coming from the future. And we know how things are supposed to be done and run, and we see the chaos, what's happened, we sometimes can be lost. This is why Aquarius always need to take care of the nervous system, the mind, because they easily can disconnect from here because you have so much going on, right? You're born with amazing, um, you know, planet Saturn, plus you have Uranus, plus you have Rahu there. A lot of it's a big, big salad. For this big salad, you require a big soul. So you need to really, really put, you know, you know, pat, pat yourself on the shoulder. And and with that, big responsibility comes. When you get so much, with that so much, big responsibility. So this is why this first house, it's extremely important uh, house for you. And, uh, you know, first house is the self house. It's your personality, your ego, your self image, even how you're going to look. Some of you, you know, Aquarius has always have a unique way to express themselves, even how they look. This time, you will change your image, even, you know, how you, even how you work with your body. Uh, you know, thinking of terms of uh, sunrise, the new beginning. This is how you call the first house, you know. But before sunrise, what do we have? We have darkness. Remember, one of the most important prayers we say in the morning, they call Brachot Shachar the prayers of the darkness because before sunrise and this is what you're gonna go through 
it's very really uh, you know liberating liberating um, liberating my apology very very important uh, and um, you know for you i feel for you aquarius it's not going to be difficult i have a feeling the new guys been waiting for this period of time you're going to be celebrated and you're going to celebrate the creation the knowledge you came with and the bigger of picture more than ever because this is your time please remember what i'm telling you right now this is your time we went through so much thousands of years this we entering right now to the age of aquarius and your knowledge your energy so needed share with others be with others be like a good parent don't judge uh, learn how to distribute your energy don't give unreasonable be more sharing uh, be really someone who you arrive in a room everyone feel then you know somebody very very special just enter and it comes with everything it comes with your behavior the way how you speak the way how you touch subjects everything right and study continue study continue elevate your consciousness use um, names of god like we have here uh, meditate on letter bet it's your bet and as well letter tzadik if you watch my other videos on aquarius there's a two letters the letter aquarius made by letter tzadik um it's uh, you know uh, it's it's a tzadik bet we have it's really really important and tzadik uh, you know it came from the word of righteousness right righteous right and what we have right we have tzadik in bed you have a lot of a lot of help coming from above so guys i wish you good luck learn more about the first house if of course you know because of the rahu and rahu it's another body you have inside so aquarius is sometimes when they disappointed from what's happening around they can really have a disappearing act so make sure this time you cannot do that don't take anything personal be like a big soul like you are okay i wish you good luck aquarius And last one, but not least, it's a beautiful, beautiful Pisces. You know, Pisces, I want us to understand something with you guys, because you just came from 11th house, house of happy, happiness. And I really hope you use the opportunity for the last two and a half years to get a little bit easy about things, you know, not to, again, I'm going to use again word disappearing act, you know, because Pisces, when they hurt or something, not the way, you know, because they represent, you guys represent, um, 12 house and this is now you're going to be inside of your 12 house is the house behind the scene but the house of disappearing act you know is the house of sleep as well you probably this period of time will have very profound uh, deep sleep uh, very important for you for this period of time to have enough sleep discipline extremely important i recommend for you to start to dance because 12 house represent feet it's really really important for you guys represent spine it's really good to do yoga you know to str to strengthen your uh to your spine and really really important to walk and to dance to use your feet to create more happiness from the physical body really really important and you know um 12 houses will represent our subconscious level, our subconscious mind, but really heart on our behalf, you know, like trying to make sense of our lives. The shadow we place, you know, like um, we need to understand the shadow we sometimes see in front of us. It's really illusion. And one of the things, by the way, because of the 12 house, you know, Pisces have ability to feel pain. But many times, especially when Pisces is not really using spirituality, they, they feel their own pain, pain way too much. And what's happened, this is what makes you not present. This is what makes you disabled. So remember, we didn't came here to feel your pain. You came to this world to open your heart more and to feel pain of other people, but in a balanced, healthy way, right? Really, really important because remember you have a lot of support right now we have uh, jupiter in the house of pisces so you are right now receiving a lot of support and this is really blessing from the sky because without that you're gonna god forbid you can feel like extra depressed but we're talking about like i said in the beginning of my video it's only my recommendation it's up to you how much you're gonna use the muscle 
of the God inside of you, the creator inside of you, how much you will activate this, you understand? And, you know, this is the house which is represents spirituality on very mystical high level because of the Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter, it's your, it's your planet and he's right now at home. It's like a, the best grandfather came, you know, this many people call it like a Santa Claus of the Zodiac system. So remember that, okay, guys, he's here to support you, but you cannot rely on, on your planet on others because uh, Pisces has ability many times to rely on other people, especially when it's in marriage, especially when it's in a relationship. They, many times they depend on other people. Be independent, okay? Really, really important. While I'm talking about Pisces, one of my furry children came. You probably can hear his uh, making noises, so sorry about that, guys. Okay, Pisces, so I wish you guys good luck. Uh, a lot of I wish you a lot of strength and see the big picture and uh, to be the righteous soul you are, guys, okay? So I'm going to end this video with video from my amazing teacher, Rob. I think this video, I recommend for you guys to watch this video a few times because gonna, uh, Rav is going to talk about the letter bed and letter bed, how much, what energy letter bed really uh, bring and how it's, why letter bed was given uh, to create planet Saturn, okay? So I wish you guys good luck. Many, many blessings. If you have any questions, you're welcome. You're welcome to send us email and as well, please don't forget to press like. I usually never ask, but my marketing team asked me to ask you guys. So please like, put some comments. And if you feel this information, this knowledge can help other people to transform because it's uh, we all benefit from it, please share my video with your friends, with others. I really, really appreciate it. All the best. These three... So again, which will begin, verses which begin with the Vav, obviously the first one will be right column, right column. In other words, these 72 letters in the first verse, verse 19, is connected with the, with the right column, says the Zohar. Vayavo, the second verse, verse 20, is connected with the left column. And... The third verse, verse 21, manifests, manifests the central column, the middle column, Vayet. We know that the Bet was the letter by which the entire world was created. Everything, right? That's why the Torah begins with the letter Bet, because Bet, over, over all other letters, was chosen as the letter by which the entire world, all of the galaxies, everything that we can ever see anywhere, was created by the bet. And the Zohar says, why the bet? One of the reasons, it has three vavs, right? It has three columns. That's where the three column system comes from. Three makes up a system, a total system. There must be a ratzon, the kabel, there must be a desire to receive, there must be a desire to share, and there must also be a desire to restrict those three systems. So therefore, each of these three psukim begin with a vav. Therefore, the bet was chosen because it could be the channel by which all intelligences of the human being to rule and control everything in the cosmos, everything in the cosmos, because everything was created with what? With a seed of three column system. The bet represents these three systems. That is the super force. That is the channel by which the whole force of the Lord becomes manifest. These 72 names are its expression. Therefore, Moshe first demonstrated, Moshe first demonstrated that mind can be over matter if you have the proper channels.